Hey, good morning, traders. This is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics, and you were listening to the uh, FACE webinar. I hope everybody's having a great um, great trading session, and uh, happy Thursday. I think uh, today's going to be a little bit of a consolidation ahead of um, tomorrow's big Fed chair um, speech from, from Fred Chairman Powell. So, uh, you know, I think today is going to be all about preparing um preparing for uh um for that uh so let me let me uh, first first and foremost uh for those of you that were probably wondering about yesterday uh uh um my sister did have a baby last night brand new baby boy um it happened just as I fell asleep last night, so uh, I, I didn't get to meet the meet the little guy. Um, we, we we planned on not being there um, after after yesterday because it was such a long day for them that uh, we we planned on going to see the baby this morning. So um, or today, anyway, I don't know about this morning, but anyway, happy, healthy. They all turned out great, and the, the coolest thing about all of this is that. Uh, 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 baby Maverick and I share the same birthday, and that is a truly a blessing. It's going to be um, awesome. And the reason why I say that is because my my sister, who is significantly younger than myself, uh, Steve met her when we were in Greece a few years ago. Uh, she came on our family trip. Uh, she's she's significantly younger than myself, and has been a wonderful aunt to my to my my kids. Um, she was there for the birth of both of my children, and I'm happy to uh, uh, pick up the torch and uh, and continue on the tradition of being a great uncle. So I'm I'm really excited about all this. Uh, anyway, uh, that just a little bit of an update because what, what's congratulations. that? Since you mentioned me, congratulations, congratulations, oh, congratulations. Thank, thank, thank you. Steve, I appreciate it. Yeah, re really, really happy. And uh, and and I, I don't want to talk too much ab about it. I just wanted to mention that because I know uh, some of you were probably wondering um, because yesterday was a little bit of a little bit of a long day for for myself. Just be, not not as long as my sister, but <laughs> she was in labor for like 15 hours. But uh, I did get up early in the morning to go pick up her dog, and so it was you know we were just kind of waiting uh, all day. But no, like I said, nothing, nothing compared to what my sister had to go through. And thanks, Steve, for the congratulations. Uh, we have, um, uh, like I said, tomorrow, and let's get over to the markets. Tomorrow is going to be a big day for the for the dollar, in my opinion. Uh, tomorrow is going to make or break the dollar. Now, everything that I've read, and let me let me grab this because I I need to get this for you guys. Um, we're going to do the bias chart and set that up. Um, go through all the majors here in just one second, but I need to talk about what, what's happening for tomorrow. So to, tomorrow with everything that I've read, every bank report that I've, I've, I've viewed over the last, um, uh, thanks, thanks Kareem and uh, Dinesh, appreciate it. Um, er, everything that I've read, uh, all the bank reports, everybody's expecting a pretty hawkish or let, let's put it this way, not dovish Fed chairman speech tomorrow. Now, remember, the Fed, the, the uh, Fed, Fed chairman Powell is uh, speaking tomorrow at the um, at the um, uh, Jackson Hole Symposium. So he will be speaking in it, which which actually starts today. Uh, he'll be speaking at seven, well, seven o'clock my time, ten o'clock in the in the morning um, Eastern time. So he's delivering a speech entitled "Monetary Policy in a Changing Economy" at the. Oh no, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, changing Economy at the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City Economic Policy Symposium in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. So he'll be uh, he'll be speaking tomorrow. I was like, Kansas City Fed must be Kansas City Fed sponsored. Anyway. Um, Regardless, he's he's speaking tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern, and that is going to be the market mover. So tomorrow we're going to be meeting at the same time here, obviously, with a little bit better idea on levels ahead of the 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 the, the Fed speech. I expect, um, and and let me let me just tell you what I expect for today. Uh, let me, can I draw it out for you? Okay, this is an hourly chart of the uh, euro dollar. You know what I expect today? I expect this. 
da, 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 da. That's what I expect, right? That's what that that that's basically it I, I, for today. I, I think we're going to come right back down to one fifteen fifty, and then you know maybe maybe even probe a little bit. Uh, here, let, let me delete that. So maybe maybe even probe a little bit down here, and then do this. Okay, and as we set up for this head and shoulder pattern, because really, the 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 pair is going to figure out if we're going to invalidate this or validate it tomorrow. So in other words, we should, if, if, you know, if I'm correct, and, and by the way, many of you guys and gals have been listening to my analysis like this in this type of format for north of 10 years. Some of you, you know, as long as 15 years. When I first started broadcasting via uh, a radio show back in 2003, 2003, 2003, would it be 2003? 2003, I think, is when the Morning Edge first broadcast uh, as, a, as a radio show. Anyway, um, and you guys know that the, one of the things that I think one of my strengths um, I, I, look, I've got plenty of weaknesses as, as a trader. <laughs> They're not all strengths, but one of my strengths um, has always been has been able to anticipate the market. You know how you execute your trades is you know that that's where the tricky part comes in, uh, in my opinion. But I, I'm really good at anticipating what I think is going to happen. A lot of that, a lot of times, things come to fruition. And what I do believe here, just factoring in every all the information we have in front of us, is that we're probably you know, we're, we're stopping shy of this big resistance, obviously, you know, big resistance at 116.20. And then we're, you know, we're, we're kind of, we're going to pause here uh, on the support, waiting to figure out what's going to happen tomorrow. Now, if the Fed chair is hawkish or just not dovish, okay, if the Fed chair, you know, reiter, you know, really reinforces the idea that we're going to be raising rates uh, next month and then probably another time in December, um, then the the euro probably will come under some pressure. We're probably going to start to you know fulfill this uh, this inverted head and shoulder pattern. Um, the flip side to that is if the um, uh, 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 the the flip side to that is if if the Fed actually is you know uh, the Fed chair is actually dovish and and we 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 get the feeling after listening to him speak that that you know seeing another rate hike in December may be questionable, which guys, I, I don't want you to think that that's out of the, out of the, out of the, um, the, uh, the realm of possible tomorrow. Um, get, getting a rate hike next month seems it, it's a slam dunk. It's uh, you know, everybody expects it, but if we walk away tomorrow going, you know, we're going to get a rate hike in September, but you know, going into the end of the year, it might be a little dicey see whether it's political risks trade war risks or other risks that 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 may be accentuated by the fed tomorrow but the fed chair more importantly then we could very well um break 116 and then start to challenge you know all this resistance here and and, and if that happens man we could really squeeze higher uh, i'm not a euro bull i'm not I really am not. I'm not a Euro bull. Um, my issue that I'm taking up is more of a dollar issue, not necessarily a Euro issue. This is just the way I will um, uh, trade or or maybe in other words, um, the way I would express the dollar weakness would be in the Euro, but there's other pairs that I could actually do that with too. Uh, which would be maybe the cable, for example, but uh, or maybe even the dollar yen. But 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 the euro dollar. I'm just showing you since it's on my screen and and, and the setup is there. I think the setup is very clean. Um, so anyway, the euro dollar I think is going to make its decision whether we're going to play into this head and shoulder pattern or not tomorrow. So what does that mean for us today? Well, that means for us today that we should probably be, um, uh, you know just prepared for some sort of consolidation as as uh, you know if you were listening into the or listening in i'm sorry if you were a forex analytics subscriber 
this morning, you know, m my basic technical analysis this morning uh, was pretty simple. This was uh, an hour and change ago before the euro popped. Okay, here's the euro dollar before it popped up to one fifteen eighty five or wherever the hell we went. Um, the euro dollar could be setting up an intraday head and shoulders pattern with Fed Chair Powell set to speak tomorrow. The rally in the euro dollar could stall today at the 116 level. A hawkish or just not dovish Powell could send the pair lower tomorrow morning. However, if the chair strikes a dovish tone, the euro dollar could clear 116.30 and really initiate a big squeeze higher in validating the setup. And that was written an hour, actually it was more like an hour and a half ago since we only, we only, um, uh, our, our automated platform only updates, it doesn't update like, oh, this was updated one hour and, you know, 42 minutes ago, it rounds. But what I'm trying to point out is I think today we've got to be prepared for this. Now, did I short the euro at 115.90? Uh, no, I didn't. I was actually telling everybody in the in our chat room I was waiting for 116. It just never got there. If the euro dollar gets to 116 today, I probably would short it just because I think the risk is manageable up there. You know, obviously, if it if it breaks 116.30, you know you're wrong. I mean, that's that's all there is to it. But um, I didn't short the euro, at least not yet. I, I would be willing to short the euro at 116. I'd be willing to buy it down at 115.40. So um, j just so you guys, uh, since we're already talking about it, let's go ahead and write this down. 115.40 is support. Uh, 116 is resistance. 116.30 is key resistance. It's okay, so I'm, I'm filling out the bias chart for you guys um, right now. Now, we are in a range. Tomorrow we could go bullish if we break out, you know, above here, and um, you know, and 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 I'm not going to uh, flip the chart to bearish tomorrow. It'll be range because even if we broke down, you know, even if we broke through 115.40, the the, uh, the the you know the risk is really it's just you know move down like that and then we're in a bigger range. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, but the risk in the euro dollar, in my opinion, the bigger risk is actually us flipping bullish. Is is the euro dollar actually breaking through resistance and 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 really turning this whole thing around, this whole move? Um, this is an hourly chart. I should probably put it on like a four hour or something. The the risk is uh, really flipping this thing around and turning up towards 120. Uh, that that's the real risk, in my opinion. I'm not long the euro. I'm just telling you guys my thoughts and by the way um, uh, I forgot today is Thursday if you guys are logging in and and, and, and joining us from investing.com welcome we do this webinar every single day uh, uh, at the same time same link that you just used so you can listen in every single day Dale Pinkert which is on Twitter if you know him he's a fork stop hunter he's usually the the host but he's out for the next uh, week and a half as he's enjoying some, excuse me, well-needed vacation. It is five o'clock in the morning here, and I've been up for a couple hours. So, uh, if I give you a yawn, it's uh, and plus yesterday was a long day, long day. Um, so, if I give you a yawn, it's that you know the reasons why. Um, okay, now let's go to the pound because this is this is the pair that I'd actually prefer to play along in. Now I am not long the cable. Okay, I'm not. Let me let me explain to you why I'm not at the moment. I sold my cable exposure yesterday. If you follow me on Twitter, you probably know exactly the reason why. We basically hit a major downtrend line. This is from the double top that was, you know, April highs over here, double top. We completed the double top, then, you know, bounced a little bit, got a and I'm, I'm drawing all this out for you guys. So, you know, we got a double top, right? Double top, extended that double top perfectly, bounced. This bounce was only a 24% retracement. And at that time, if you guys were listening in back then, I said, hey, very shallow retracement, only 24%. Chances are we're going down again. We have gone down again. And um, now we, you know, obviously overexerted ourselves uh, to the downside and we're bouncing. Now, question is, what happens from here? Well, as you know, 
if we break, if you were listening in yesterday, you know this, if we break this 38% retracement, we broke it yesterday by five pips, that's not, or six pips, that's not breaking it. You know, a sustained break is when you spend hours and hours and hours above a key level or below a key level, and then that, that will, to me, constitute that this breakout is for real, or at least a very, 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 very high probability that it's real. Yesterday we spent, oh, I don't know, um, you know, a few minutes above uh, above um, uh, 129.30. We tried to do it again and then failed, okay? So, it, you know, this is obviously key. Why, did, why is that important today? Well, it's important, at least today and, and tomorrow, really, more importantly, is because I know that you know, that we all know, that everybody knows, that this is really key resistance here, okay, which I'm going to write down. See how I'm just like, see how I'm so smooth and just kind of marking down these levels? Oh, yeah. You guys didn't even know what was coming at you, did you? Just uh, key resistance. Somebody's in a good mood today. Uh, I am. I am. I'm, a, I'm, I'm an uncle today. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I, I do have a headache, believe it or not. That does um, look like a bull flag a little bit, though, doesn't it? It does. And 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 this is, uh, you know, talking about um, playing the dollar short. My my preferred trade is actually the cable. I, I think that I, I'm a, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I heard Stelios chuckling there, uh, but I. I you know, have talked with him the last few days about the idea of, I think that the Brexit negotiations are going to be just fine. I think that a lot of this rhetoric about, you know, possible hard Brexit, blah, 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 it's just negotiating tactic. It's like, oh, well, you should be scared because we, we, uh, we know that the worst case scenario is upon us, you know, we're prepared, you know. So screw you guys, EU. You know, I, I think that's just all it is, is just the UK playing a little bit of hardball. I think everything is going to end up being fine. And um, and so the pound, I think, is going to be a great trade to reflect that. Should we see dollar weakness? Now, I am not long the cable just yet. Uh, I think that the pound on, on dips, especially to this spike high right here, which is 128.50 or 25. 128, uh, 128.30, uh, 128 it's going to be very well supported. If we get down there, I'd be a buyer today. If we get, if we spike down there, I'd, I'd, I'd prefer. And, and you, you can see if this is a bull flag, uh, you know, even if we do this, I'd, I'd play it. I'd play it and hope, and hope that the Fed chair would be dovish tomorrow. I don't know what the Fed chair is going to say tomorrow. I mean, my, my assumption is he's not going to be dovish. My assumption is he's going to be, um, you know, he's just going to, he's going to, you know, maintain pretty much stay the course and it's not going to create a whole lot, whole lot of volatility, but you don't know. You don't know until it happens tomorrow. So, um, you know, I'd like to be nicely positioned if we got a dip to 128, um, 128.30, get long and then it goes mid-range by tomorrow you know we get right back up to 129 and then then uh, you get lucky and he gives us a, some sort of um you know dovish uh dovish um uh you know commentary and you know you get the pound breaking out so i, I just don't think it's going to break out today but that's that's how i'm looking to play the cable right now okay um all right, uh, let's go over to the Aussie. Now, the Aussie, just so you guys know, I was long the Aussie New Zealand. I got taken to the woodshed last night. Um, uh, the, the, uh, the, you know, Turnbull's um, contest of uh, leadership has really taken, taken the Aussie a turn for the worse. So I, I got stopped out of my Aussie uh, New Zealand last night when it broke through the support. Um, our pattern in play got invalidated, and you guys can clearly see the reason why. Uh, the, um, the, the fact of the matter is, um, hold on really quick. Let me do something really fast. Okay. Uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is with the, with the Aussie is it is extremely weak. It looks weak on all crosses now. And, and we are, we are actually testing some support here. This is the previous neckline. I actually think the Aussie can move lower. Whoops. That, uh, let me, uh, no. 
Sorry. Stop. I, I usually I usually just refresh the page, otherwise it will not go away. Oh, I don't know, I don't know what's happened. Yeah, it's, uh, something's changed as of late. Um, but thanks, Delios. I appreciate it. So we we're testing the neckline, so um, of the the Aussie right now. So the question is, how far down can we go? And I and I actually like the Aussie as a short, not necessarily the Aussie dollar. I I like other currencies. Uh, like the pound Aussie long, the euro Aussie long, I think those are the better trades because the dollar is a little bit more of a um, uh, wild card right now. And if you guys don't know why the dollar uh, weakened uh, earlier, it's because, um, uh, you know, uh, President Trump really, he, he didn't threaten the market, but he, he did. He, he's like, He's like, you know, what if I get impeached? You know, the market's going to fall apart. More of, um, more of like uh, putting the idea, not like the idea is not in the mind of, you know, <laughs> Democrats anyway, uh, but uh, of the market, but really making it a, is, you know, maybe a little bit more of a po possibility that we start going through some impeachment hearings uh, in the next few months. And the dollar didn't take kindly to that because, and, and I, and, and by the way, I happen to agree with, uh, the president, if 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 uh, he is impeached, uh, the stock market is going to absolutely get punished. We will lose all of these gains that we've had um, for the last you know year and a half, two years. So, um, and I think the dollar was like freaked out the dollar a little bit uh, as a result. The equity markets didn't care, but uh, the dollar did. Um, but if the dollar does strengthen following tomorrow, because you know forex traders have uh, a, a great um, a deal of ADD, then then uh, we're, we're going to focus on Powell and forget what Donald Trump had to say today, um, going into uh, <laughs> going into today anyway. All right, so the six one eight here is com comes in at seventy two seventy one. I got to do this. I got to seventy two seventy one. I got to get this analysis done. I. Really, I'm falling behind. Uh, any type of rally back up to 73.75 should find resistance now. 73.75. We are range, or actually, I should probably put we are in a bearish trend still in the Aussie. The Aussie's really this rejection here after the inverted head and shoulder pattern completion. That's pretty bearish that we couldn't um, couldn't uh, uh, you know move up. Okay, uh, Kiwi. Kiwi had a really key rejection of the upper end of its resistance yesterday. Um, Kiwi is actually sitting on some support here. Uh, 66.55 is probably support. I bet you that's a 38% retracement, if I had to guess. It is. It's actually, uh, it's exactly the... 38% retracement. <laughs> that was pretty good. All right, so support 66.55. Point 66.55. Resistance key at uh, 67.20. No questions asked. 67.20. That's resistance. Uh, I think the key we might be more in a range, but actually it's still in a bearish trend too. It still is. Um, and remember, the cable can turn bullish if we broke that 129.30. It would flip from bearish to bullish, but not right now. Uh, U.S. dollar Canadian range bound. We did break through 130 briefly. Uh, we we uh, I, like I told you guys yesterday, have fun trading the Canadian because I ain't doing it. We are in this uh, we're in this channel, and it's being respected. So uh, support right now is uh, 129. 90 below that, it's going to be 129.50. Resistance is uh, 130.55. You know, we get above 130.55, and that could turn us back up towards 131 and change. So 130.55, it's very minor resistance. We are in a range. Okay, let's go over to the Swissy. So here's the Swissy. Um, Swissy, big rejection actually. Uh, 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 so we broke through the support, we rallied back, stopped at that 
resistance. So now that's key, 9855. Ninety-eight fifty-five. That's key resistance now, and then support is uh, at ninety-eight oh eight. So ninety-eight ten, ninety-eight ten. Bearish. Uh, by the way, we do have in just a few minutes. We have um, unemployment claims and corporate profits. Oh, it's interesting. Forex factory, which, you know, by the way, I'm not a I'm not a huge Forex factory fan. As far as um, they, they they don't give me enough uh, enough data here, but I like the setup. I like the visual setup. It's it's good. But their uh, unemployment claims they finally turned that to yellow after being orange for years and years and years. It's like, oh, you finally understood that unemployment claims hasn't mattered for the last several years. So. They finally figured that out and put it because unemployment's full capacity and we're it's not moving the market at all. Has it? Whoops, hasn't in a long time. Give me one second. Whoops. Okay. So dollar max. So the dollar Mexican peso we broke lower yesterday. It could be and and I was surprised actually. I you know you guys remember my comments from yesterday probably about. Um, you know, I thought Mexico would come in with a little bit of more of a hardball stance. Yeah, they didn't. They uh, they 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 basically you know um, said, "Wow, everything looks uh, you know." In Canada, same thing. Freeland said, "Oh, you know, everything looks promising." Woo! You know, it's like, come on, grow a pair of balls for crying out loud. You know, hit 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 the U.S. while they're down. And I'm and I am American. I'm just saying, you know, from a strategic standpoint. It's like if if you know that the Trump administration is in a weakened state and you've been getting beat up regarding NAFTA, why don't you stand up for yourself a little bit right now because you have the upper hand. But no, that didn't happen. Um, both Mexico and Canada said, oh, you know, great, we're getting close. So anyway, peso just drifting lower. I, I don't know. I, I mean, until we get some sort of, uh, you know, significant NAFTA news, i you know, we're past the 618. Channel support um, may come in around 1866. So we'll write that down. 18.66. Do you guys, do you guys, do, am I am I crazy by thinking that? Uh, and KJ said, nine years listening to my, me broadcast, I feel like a rookie compared to others. <laughs> nine years, KJ. Thank you so much for your support over the years. I really appreciate that. Um, uh, but but am I crazy for thinking that? It's like if you were Canada and you were Mexico or Mexico, Canada or Mexico, why wouldn't you have yesterday said, why why wouldn't you just walked away from the bargaining table? Uh, I know there's a lot at stake here, but you know it's a game of chicken. You know you're playing the negotiating it's a game of chicken right now. Anyway, resistance at 1890, and and like I said, I'm American. I just I want what's best for us too. I'm just talking from a trying to be an outsider looking in standpoint versus my opinion um, or versus a, an opinion of an American, I guess is what way I should state that. All right. Hey, we have unemployment claims coming up. Let me just cover that really fast. It shouldn't move the market, but unless we see an outsized print like, uh, uh oh, all right, there we go. Unless we see an outsized print of, uh, you know, we print 300,000 jobs or 300,000 in unemployment claims, which ain't going to happen. Gonna, not going to happen, man. I know. I mean, but but if it did, uh, the, the dollar would sell off really fast. But, you know, I remember, you know, way back in the day, and this is just a Bloomberg terminal, guys, so you can see the data when it comes out. We have um, continuing claims and jobless claims right here. Uh, still, I remember um, no one looked at the Philly Fed uh, back in, it was like 2005 or something, and no one was looking at that data point at all, ever. And um, I remember I, I, it's something like this, and then this is just like, I'm just kind of um, like 210,000. It's nothing. Yeah, maybe it's in line. Yeah, a little bit better than expected. The dollar yen ticks up two pips, so what? Okay, um, but yeah, basically in line, that's it. So I, I remember I was trading the Philly Fed, it was like 2005, and I was at home. I was um, 
uh, if I were to go in the office to, you know, do to do the um, broadcast, but it, you know, being in Dallas, it was like two hours. The data is like by the time I got in, the data was going to be really, or the it was like after the fact. I was coming in a little bit late. I think that day was. Anyway, um, I remember the euro dollar was trading, you know, wherever it was trading at the time. But Philly Fed was expected to come in at like. 22. It came in at like 40 something. It jumped like crazy. Uh, the euro dollar that day dropped like 250 pips because it was so such an outsized number and no one was expecting it. And I remember I shorted the crap out of the euro. I made I made some good money uh, that day, um, and that's why it's so vivid in my head. Uh, but but it's one. I think weekly jobless claims are going to be that. Like one day we're going to be sitting there expecting a print of 200k, 215k, 230k, and we're going to get this print of 300, and the dollar is going to move wildly. It, it, it'll come, uh, and, you know, maybe. Who knows? I don't know. Anyway, okay. Uh, let me let me finish this up, guys, and then I'll hand it over to you. I'll, I'll be quick. Um, dollar CAD we covered, so we covered the Swiss peso, Norwegian krona. So the new, the, the Norwegian krona is sitting on pretty key support. Remember, this is a big breakout point. Uh, if you guys don't recall, it's right here. All right. Uh, comes in at, uh, well, it was 833. I'm going to write down 832 now since we kind of probed it. 832, 840 like we wrote down yesterday. Same thing. Um, 832, support 840. Uh, there was some comments from the Norges Central Bank last night that were hawkish, viewed as hawkish. That's why the dollar nook is uh, a little weaker, but still range bound. We need to really break uh, in order for us to uh, to start uh, moving lower here. By the way, the cable's coming under a little bit of pressure. The cable's just, it's giving back all of these, look at this, all these gains. Um, you know, just all, you know, we were trading at 129.10. We've come all the way down to 128.73. Probably will bounce around. I, I, I don't think we're going much lower than where we're at. We might, we might head down to the 60s, but uh, we should end up bouncing around here for the most part. Okay, sorry. Back to analysis. Uh, Swedish krona. Nine oh three. Uh, back up here, 914, 9.03, 9.14. We are range. Uh, actually, you know what? I take that back. We're 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 still bullish while we're above 904. And actually, I should probably write that down with the Norwegian krona. Well, wow. this this failure here is a little scary. That failure up here, that multi-year trend line. That, that failure up there is a little scary. The Swedish Krona, on the other hand, uh, I guess that butter that butterfly rejection. Yeah, I'll just put it as range right now until we figure things out tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to have a much better clue on what we should be doing tomorrow after 10 a.m. Eastern. Dollar yen. Dollar yen has had an aggressive bounce. I was pretty surprised about the the bounce overnight, but that was mostly due to the remimbi. The U.S. dollar CNH took off last night. You can see it took off, and uh, the dollar yen followed suit. So, uh, resistance, 127% extension comes in at 110.95. So that should hold for today, I would think. 95. Uh, support. I'm sure we'll be really well supported on a dip back to 110.50 for today, at least for today. Okay. And we were basically in a range and the dollar index, dollar index. Um, now, this is something we should note here, okay? We held this support, so that support is now key. That comes in at 95, resistance 95.50. My assumption is we will be trading. Uh, we will be trading in this vicinity till tomorrow. My, if I had to guess, we're going to be right here. Okay. 
95.50, probably don't want to get too carried away, uh, getting too bearish nor bullish the dollar until we have a better clue for tomorrow. Okay, so we are range bound, and and I will, t and I'm going to reiterate what I said yesterday. In the event, okay, and this is just a nice little recovery bounce after you know several days sell off. In the event tomorrow, if for some reason, if for some reason tomorrow we break here, this will be an extremely bearish event for the dollar. Uh, I, I will reiterate this uh, that we talked about yesterday with Steve here, um, the, uh, the, the dollar index, that evening star formation that Steve pointed out, that shooting star on the weekly count, that's going to be a really, really, really bearish look if we come breaking through this support tomorrow which there's a lot of dollar longs out there. I ain't gonna lie, there's a lot of dollar longs out, out there. A lot of people, um, you know, playing the trade war card, playing the dollar long as a, as a beneficiary. They're gonna get absolutely smashed if we, if we break 94.70 tomorrow. Um, and, and, and that, by the way, is really critical support. I could write down 94.70, asterisk is being really key. All right, guys, your bias chart is finished. And uh, I'm actually pretty tired uh, this morning. I, if I sound like I'm, I'm lacking in energy, is because I am. I'm just uh, I'm a little worn out, believe it or not. And I didn't even give birth. Imagine that, Steve Stelios. How are you guys doing? I didn't even give birth, and I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. how are you guys doing? You need some rest, man. I'm, 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 to be honest, it's not by accident. We're not built to give birth, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Oh, yeah, exactly. And, and you know, I actually, um, I, I would be in much better shape if I was in Porto Heli, or Porto Heli uh, Greece, like you, Steve. Uh, uh, Nadang asks, uh, how, how, hello, how can I have the economic calendar you popped up on the screen? This right here? That's Bloomberg. $20,000 per year. Yeah, well, we pay $2,500 $2, a month, so uh, that would be you know over 30 grand probably a year you have some, probably you have, uh, some extra markets uh, Blake because I think the basic package if I remember um, is roughly twenty thousand dollars per year but yeah that that excludes several things that you you have to buy separately oh yeah yeah we have uh, mine costs nearly three grand a month so yeah but no but, it's, but but yeah it's 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 uh, my firm that pays for it so yeah well but actually we that's have, not really true it comes out of my profits so we, we, have, we have to say that, uh, you know, th there are decent calendars out there and actually there are. Uh, in the Forex Analytics platform, we have um, embedded the investing.com calendar, which is a very, very good one, uh, if you ask me. So, you know, Absolutely. subscribers to Forex Analytics can, can also on the same platform because that's, that's what we were aiming for. So you have, you know, uh, with Forex Analytics, everything you need besides, of course, your uh, broker's uh, platform and you know you 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 can find investing.com's calendar there as yeah. well and hey um I, i'm gonna turn it over to steve but can ask has anyone gone over oil and gold so um I, steve, I'm, I'm, I know i know you will i wanted to leave some stuff for for uh you and stelios hey and and i want to welcome or i want to want to say thanks everybody for for visiting um you know the the webinar today remember if you um, like what you saw here, make sure you uh, visit um, uh, Forest Park FX. They are, um, they, they'll, they'll, they'll basically, they're, they're the, the broker's uh, broker. They'll, they'll help you find a broker that will suit your needs the best. And you can get Forex Analytics um, through a reimbursement program if you use one of their brokers. So uh, make sure you contact them. There's a Skype and email address right here at the bottom uh, on the uh, Forex Analytics um, reimbursement program page. So all you have to do is click on this link right here and it takes you to this page. All right, guys, uh, thanks for thanks for listening. And I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues, Steve and uh, Stelios. And, Thank um, you, Blake. Hey, Thank you. Thanks. Congratulations. Thanks, guys. Really, really uh, excited and, and happy. So happy everybody's healthy and ha health, healthy, healthy and 10 fingers, 10 toes, all sorts of stuff. So yeah. that's what matters. <laughs> it is. All right, guys. Steve, have a great one. Steve, before we yes, before you kick off with analysis, I just have one little thing to say about um, Jackson Hole and the Fed. Uh, there was actually um, 
uh, a headline just a couple of minutes ago where Esther George of the Fed said that uh, she doesn't let uh, Trump influence her votes on rate hikes, which is interesting. And it goes back to what you have said. And, you know, many people have said that they shouldn't really be um, affected. And if they are, people might interpret it as they are, you know, as Trump dictating what the Fed's going to do. So they, they want to avoid that. Now, I have to say one thing. Tomorrow, I think Jackson Hole will be should should bear no surprises. I mean, I, I don't see what's changed. But I have to say this. The reasons for Fed members to start being more cautious are increasing slowly. So you have things like trade wars continuing. You know, today was the uh, the, today took effect. It was some of the, uh, the tariffs between U.S. and China started taking effect. All this is going to start working through the economy, both economies. And uh, you know, you have the continuing NAFTA negotiations. You have all these issues with Trump and his lawyer, and you know, all the people associated with him who are going to prison or, or pleaded guilty and all that. So, to be honest, the list of people that Trump has been associated with that are. Uh, yeah. either going to jail or um, under uh, scrutiny that might lead to that is, is growing by the day, right? Yes, I mean, and you know, the last thing they it's want... Not, it's not fun anymore. I mean, it's not a joke. Yeah. And the last thing they want is for the government to be in danger, you know, and uh, for, you know, whatever might happen as, as a result, you know. So I think they, they do start having reasons to think about slowing down the pace. I don't think they will do anything uh, tomorrow or in the September meeting. But after that, I think, uh, you know, all bets are off. Anything can happen, you know, so especially with the pace that things are developing. So I just want I just want to have I always have this in the back of my mind. I look at what the market's pricing, which is almost two hikes this year and two more next year. What do I think the risk is? Well, I don't think something's going to happen. I don't I can't see what will happen that will make them more hawkish. Only inflation ticking up a lot. That's that's what I think will, will make them become more hawkish. But um, yeah, otherwise, that's, that, that's very true. And to, to be honest, inflation is an ongoing risk. But as I've said before, because you know. Uh, I've been foreseeing this as a possibility, but you know, when I ask myself the question, let's assume that we have inflation accelerating higher, and at some point sooner rather than later, even by by looking at how far we've gone in this business cycle um, and in this bull uh, run, um, I don't know what the catalyst is going to be, but sooner or later we're going to have a downturn and uh, downturn of the economy. And then I'm asking myself, yeah. if the Fed has to fight at the same time inflation or a downturn in the economy, which of the two you think they would focus on? Well, theoretically, they should focus, focus, on focus on inflation. But, yeah, yes, I know but, they want, yeah, but they want. Yeah. But they want, yes. Yeah. Their mandate supposedly has nothing to do with economic growth, right? Yeah. I mean, they're yeah. supposed to be taking care of price stability and employment. And, uh, right? Employment, exactly, yes. yes. Yeah, of course, uh, what somebody... Really... What, what yeah. really gets me is how the market just doesn't care. Like equities did nothing yesterday or the day before with Cohen, uh, the Cohen developments. And like, like Blake said, you know, Trump said that, uh, oh, if I get in, uh, impeached, the market is going to crash. Yeah, it's likely. But shouldn't markets price in a little bit of a probability of Trump getting impeached? At the moment, they should. Right. This is getting bigger and bigger. It's not a 50 50 event, but it's, you know, 10, 15, 20 percent. I don't know what it is. Shouldn't the market yeah. be priced for this? It seems to be just completely on a different planet. You know, equity. Now, I just don't on the other hand, which, which isn't a surprise, personally speaking, OK, let's say that I'm, I'm the president. And there is a chance that I'm going to get impeached. Why? Why make that statement? I mean, uh, I wouldn't ever make that statement because it sounds a little bit like you know, if it comes to that, I would suggest you don't impeach me. But, you know, impeachment has yeah. nothing to do, theoretically speaking, justice has nothing to do with what is going to happen with you, uh, you know, in any case, theoretically yeah. speaking, of course, right? Not yeah. practically speaking. But, I mean, th this kind of a statement is, you know, that isn't something that somebody should say because I, I, I don't see how it helps, uh, yeah. you know, uh, you, um, uh, you know, um, uh, show up like somebody that, 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 is, that is innocent. I'm not saying he's innocent or guilty. I don't know and I don't care at all. I'm saying that, you know, this is not a statement that somebody should make just to uh, point out that he or she yeah. is innocent because it, it doesn't look good. It but anyhow, inspire, uh, Trump... It doesn't inspire confidence. Yes, you're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> but whatever. But anyway, yeah, it um, is what it is. 
Speaking of uh, risks, so we can uh, start going over some charts and I remind you that we don't have an interview. So if we need to, you know, uh, spend 10 more minutes or whatever, we, we're going to do it. Um, speaking of that, let me show again, because this is what I've been seeing in NASDAQ for a long period of time, this potential ascending wedge, you can see it here. Um, so, you know, uh, as you see, the NASDAQ is perfectly whole ascending line, which in my opinion is, it has a very high probability of being an ascending wedge support. So as long as that's the case, you know, we still have a, you know, a, a, a bullish uh, run, which is uninterrupted. But, you know, there are two areas that I'm focusing more. One of them is this area like 7,565, where we have a confluence of uh, 161.8 with 141.4 uh, of this move lower and that move lower equivalently. And the other one is higher, which is the 161.8. Um, of that move lower, which was like, you know, the last decent kind of a corrective move we had lower, um, which comes higher and, you know, so which should also uh, confluence, uh, you know, in a week or, or so uh, with this ascending um, uh, trend line resistance, which is, you know, the potential wedges resistance, uh, which comes at 7,740. So, you know, I, I would be... Um, I would be looking forward to seeing a move uh, likely up there and, you know, a failure, um, you know, would get me very interested to actually shorting the NASDAQ. Uh, but anyhow, don't dismiss the possibility that this can just break below this trend line. And even if that doesn't prove to be like an ascending wedge with whatever implications that has, which will be very bearish implications, because theoretically speaking, a wedge when it breaks should at least retrace uh, the whole length of the wedge, right? So that would point to at least a move lower to 6,300, which is like more than 1,000 handles from where we are. It's like 1.1k handles lower. But even if that's not like an ascending wedge, so it doesn't retrace all the way to that, it still is a very reliable ascending trend line support. I mean, look how many times the market has tested that. One, two, three, four, five. And, you know, the last few days it has been retested another couple of times. So we've been testing this trend line support since April. And so far it has been holding every single time. But there is an obvious, even if you see at the price action here, there is an obvious a loss of momentum. You can also see that in the RSI because there is a clear divergence in the RSI at the same time, uh, which you know makes perfect sense since the RSI is in essence a momentum indicator. Um, so bottom line, I would be very skeptical here, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not ruling out another push higher, as I said, um, but I do think that the NASDAQ looks like it's running out of fuel. Okay. Now, if we switch to the IWM before I go to, to FX, I was looking um, uh, at, at this recent consolidation um, as a triangle, and I said that, you know, it can either break higher or lower, of course, but it should extend when it does that. As always, I keep saying that whenever we see a triangle, you expect that the chances of it breaking in the direction of the trend, which means higher in this case, are a lot higher than breaking lower. That's exactly what happened. It broke higher. But um, what we're seeing here, and let, let me move this around there, what we're seeing here, and let me zoom out so you can see it, is that, yes, we did break above the triangle, but we are getting now very close to testing this ascending channel. As you can see that this ascending channel um, it is here since uh, the end of 2015, so it's a very, uh, very solid technical formation. Um, so we are approaching that uh, trend line resistance, uh, and at the same time, we are approaching the trend line resistance of a previous channel that the market was following for years. You can see it here if I zoom out. There it is. So this is a channel that was holding uh, since we found the low in 2009 until we uh, actually broke below it in uh, 2015 and then we formed another ascending channel so extending that previous one as you see comes and confluences roughly with the current channel a little bit higher than where we are right so they both confluence in a few days roughly at 174 175 so yes the iwm the russell remains bullish we had a bullish breakout from this triangle, but in my opinion, um, you know, you should be uh, cautious. 
Of course, there is still no reversal signal, but personally, I would be looking for the next uh, big move to be lower here as well, uh, instead of being um, higher. So I wanted to po point out those two specific indices, because in my opinion, uh, from the US stock indices are the ones that have the you know clearest uh, technical structure. And another one I wanted to show is the Nikkei. Why? Because the Nikkei is stuck in what seems to be a triangle, right? But the triangle's support is a quite an important trend line uh, because if we extend it back uh, in time, it you know it draw, we can you know we can draw it from um, June 2016 low uh, to um, the recent low that we had, and obviously we seem to be consolidating. So it's quite obvious what's happening here. Um, either a break below this 22,000 area or above um, the 23,000, which I've been saying for a long time now, um, is uh, going to be indicating where the next move will come, um, uh, in which direction the next move will come. And, you know, I don't want to take any, uh, we, we're in the middle of this uh, triangle, or if you want to see it as a range of this range. So, you know, I wouldn't be taking any position, but for me, knowing how important those two levels are, is quite important because I do think that when we finally break out, that we have a lot of implications and knowing um, uh, how the yen can act uh, in, uh, you know, uh, in times, especially if, if, the, if this comes as a, as a big risk of move, I would, uh, I would definitely take it into consideration in seeing how to trade, um, you know, the rest of the markets in general. So, um, I, that's what I want to say about risk. So let's go back to, uh, for, to Forex. And mostly I want to start by uh, having a look at the Aussie pairs because we, we had a decently big move in the Aussie. Uh, so let's have a look at the Aussie pairs. And Stelio, do we have any questions, by the way? Uh, we had a question on oil and now we have a question on uh, dollar um, czar, the rand, basically. Okay, okay. So the yeah. You, you, Blake said that before, so let me start by having a look a look at both crude and gold, and then I'm going to go to the uh, to the um, Aussie pairs. So uh, nice rebound from crude. Personally, I'm still not convinced that the move lower is done. Uh, we did find support though in the 200 DMA, and I do believe that the trend remains higher. I just don't believe in the short to medium term that we're done moving lower. So. I'm a little bit torn here. I mean, um, you know, since my medium to long term bias remains uh, higher, um, you know, I don't want to be pushing, uh, you know, um, the, the bearish uh, case too much. But on the other hand, I would still uh, be looking for a move towards 6370. Um, so I'm, I still haven't seen much to be convinced that, you know, we found the tradable low. So I still remain cautious. I mean, only above 70, I would be uh, considering the move to the downside uh, as done. Until that point, um, you know, another failure and another push to the downside remains my preferred scenario. Okay. Now, having to do with gold, and gold is actually a very, um, at, a, at a very critical uh, point here. Why? Because we were looking at this chart the other day, and I said that, listen, you know, we have a very nice bounce so far, but for me, for anything to actually happen in this market and, and start looking for a lot more upside, I want to see a break above 1206 because 1206 was previous support. You see here, the market was holding that area for like four or five consecutive days um, in what proved to be uh, price action was, all, was also very apparent, but it also proved to be, in fact, uh, bearish consolidation. And at the same time, that would guarantee that we would see a break above this descending um, channel. So this descending channel rejected price action once again. We are testing now the horizontal support area, uh, which is around 1190. So I I'm not saying that that's it, gold failed. Gold is going to be moving lower towards my next target would be the 161.8% extension of the previous bull run higher, which comes at um uh 11.58 so um you know i'm not saying that we're going there yet because we might see another push higher uh following tomorrow and whatever happens um 
and you know we might finally break out and move to the upside in which case i think we're gonna uh if we clear 1206 i think we can easily push above 1230 uh if not higher than that but i'm saying that you know don't jump the gun we are still trapped within a descending channel which is bearish we're still below that uh long-term um ascending trend line uh support that has bro has been broken let me zoom out so you can see there it is this one the blue one so you have to keep respecting uh the downside until we at least break um higher from here okay so i think we we need confirmation until then nothing much to say um silver same kind of thing look at this silver actually didn't even make it to this descending um channel resistance it failed uh, lower than that but as i said that doesn't mean that it can't like move higher again and break above the channel but one thing is for sure and until or unless it breaks above this channel i mean what kind of a technical pattern would they be pointing at and saying no this thing has bottomed i mean i can say it has bot bottomed only by using let's say intuition or gut feeling but this is not the way i want to be trading right so if if i if i have to give some technical explanation that any of those have has uh, have bottomed I don't have to offer any so you know that's it it is what it is if tomorrow brings you know another push higher and we actually start breaking these areas then we can have a different conversation and, and as i said a break above 1206 in gold is getting is going to get me very interested because i think that can easily uh extend to 1232 okay but this hasn't happened yet so uh until uh that point in time i i just have to you know to keep looking lower now let me go through the aussie pairs because first of all look at the rejection that the aussie usd got yesterday there it is right triangle break lower perfect perfect tag of the 161.8 percent extension of the triangles range rebound retest of this uh broken triangle support and a big rejection so uh, also look at the RSI. The RSI made it back roughly to 50, which is exactly what you expect to see uh, in a bearish trend. Bottom line, bad uh, rejection. Um, obviously, if you're bullish, this is not what you wanted to see. And obviously, if you're bullish, uh, you're running for the exit, right? Now, Aussie Kiwi. Um, I was very, very skeptical about the Aussie Kiwi, and I have to say that I'm bearish. I'm, I'm very bearish the Aussie Kiwi for two reasons. Reason number one: we have been trapped in a long-term uh, symmetrical triangle. Let me zoom out so you can see it before I zoom in. So look at this: long-term symmetrical triangle uh, has been going on since 2013. So this is already like five, five plus years. Uh, that has been going on right symmetrical triangle we came up to almost retest resistance but what worries me even more is the fact that and as you see i haven't changed anything in my drawing since before i left for vacations i was viewing this as a triangle i was pointing to a break higher but i remember i was saying it in a webinar here i was expecting a rejection anywhere between 111.2 and 111.5 because we had a confluence of resistances up here which included the following first of all the 161.8 percent extension uh, of this move lower there it was then it was the 78.6 percent uh, fib of that move lower which is here and we also had the quality of the two leg, legs higher let me show it we had a quality of this leg higher with this leg higher coming in at 111.30 okay so a lot and we also have this ascending channel and usually corrective moves channel very nicely like in an a b c kind of fashion right so we had an a b c perfectly tagging this area that as you saw has four resistances and a little bit higher was the fifth resistance and perhaps the most important one that symmetrical triangles resistance we failed here uh, we, we are plunging lower in, in, in a move that seems to have quite a lot of momentum. Uh, so I have to say that I think this thing is going to be moving lower. I think that we will eventually break this 
uh, 85 area. And I think that at the very least, we're going to make it back to this symmetrical triangles support. So I do think that the Aussie um, should remain uh, weak against the Kiwi. Of course, there will be some bounces, right? Nothing moves in a straight line or almost nothing. I mean, only the Turkish Lira moves in a straight line, right, Stelio? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so, so I do think we, we're going to be moving, uh, moving lower from here. Um, so let me erase those drawings and move on to the next Aussie pair, which is the Aussie Yen. I was actually showing, I think, yesterday the Aussie Yen, and I specifically said that the Aussie Yen was testing a horizontal support area as resistance. You can see it here if I zoom out. There it is. You see how important this horizontal area of support has been in the past. And, you know, we retested it. Nice rejection. Uh, I said yesterday, you know, that going back into this channel is perplexing things a little bit, but we still had this horizontal area of support that might act as resistance. So there was still the potential of getting rejected from there. So far, this has happened. And, you know, there's no way I can turn bullish as long as we uh, remain below this 8150 area. So you have a very um, uh, clear, um, uh, you know, risk here. Anything above 8150, I think, um, you know, uh, damages the technical outlook. But until that happens or, you know, uh, um, uh, until we see a move higher from there, you, you have to respect the potential for more downside. It's as simple as that. Now, Euros is, was another pair that I pointed to yesterday because I said that it looks like that the corrective move is done. And I was expecting for confirmation seeing this break to the upside. And that's exactly what uh, happened um, today. Uh, so I do think, and this is what we drew yesterday, I do think that especially if we close above 159 on a daily closing basis, uh, this is going to confirm that another extension to the upside to at least retest the previous high near 162 is in the cards. So um, I do think that we have a technical break happening in the Euros today, and I do think that it should extend higher. Now, pound Aussie. I'm a little bit less convinced about the pound Aussie because yesterday I was saying, so obviously, let's let's start by that. If I wanted to be long the Euro Aussie or the pound Aussie, you already understand that I would go you know, for the Euro Aussie, right? There's no question about that. Now, I was saying yesterday about the pound Aussie that there is still a potential that we're seeing here an A, B, C, perhaps a retest of these triangles, broken support as resistance, might uh, bring another rejection. So, I would be a lot more skeptical, keep in mind that also at this same area, we find the 50 daily moving average and just a little bit higher, the 200 daily moving average. So I'm a lot more skeptical having to do with the pound Aussie. Um, I think that Euro Aussie is, uh, you know, a, a much better bet if you're looking to be bullish. So bearish in essence, the Aussie. Um, and I'm, I'm looking to see what's going to happen uh, in the pound Aussie, uh, you, know, uh, if, you know, from here or a little bit higher from here before I make judgment, okay? Until then, purely, if I had only one chart in front of me and, you know, completely um, uh, not taking into account any other um, Aussie chart, I would be looking for a resumption lower in this chart, but given the fact that this uh, contradicts a little bit my view in uh, other charts having to do with the fate of the Aussie, I'm a little bit more skeptical, so I won't be sorting the pound Aussie here. I'm just monitoring. Okay, let me be clear about that. So these are the pairs I wanted to show since we had, you know, big moves in the um, uh, Aussie. As, as Blake mentioned, uh, the, this move lower had to do with uh, political developments. Um, we will have a change of prime minister, as it, as it looks like, Stelio, right? Turnbull will be giving his spot to somebody else what what do you think is going to happen there well not quite i mean they you know there there are um, there is nearly the the enough numbers needed to to take power from him but I, it looks like you know i think they need 40 
three signatures or something like that, and they are like 40 or 41. Basically, they're almost there. So um, yeah, it looks like it, but it's not it's not a done deal yet. Anyhow, it's more than enough to at least show that there is uh, some political instability at the moment in uh, uh, Australia, and and as always, there is nothing that an economy and obviously its currency likes more than uncertainty. And we've seen that with Brexit, with with Great Britain and Brexit. I mean, there's, one, there's, one of the main the reasons... There's nothing, there's nothing it likes less, you mean? Not like oh, yeah, more. sorry. Uh, yeah. Did I say the yeah. opposite? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing that it likes less than, than uncertainty, yes. And, and we, one of the main factors why um, the cable has been suffering uh, so badly, um, not, not because of the repercussions of Brexit, but, but mostly because of a lot of uncertainty, uncertainty that comes with it until we finally see how this thing is going to be, get settled. I think that once the Brexit story is going to get settled, even if that's mostly on negative terms for the UK, I still believe that the pound is going to rally. Yeah. Okay. So, um, do we have any, any more questions? You did the crosses. Did you did you do oil and the uh, USDR? Because you did. Oh, the, the sorry, crosses. no, I didn't. I did oil, but not USDR. So yes, uh, you're right. Let's uh, let's have a look at a few of the exotics, and and we can call it a day um, after that. So um, okay, USDR. There it is. So this is exactly what I was pointing uh, to. Before I left for vacation, I haven't changed this chart. I, I, I was saying that this is a pennant. Uh, pennant should break to the upside, and we should see a move towards 1440. Uh, not only do we saw a move towards 1440, but obviously, um, you know, we had a huge spike, quite a lot higher. So uh, we are now seeing a pullback. I think I should feed this. Looks like a 61.8 roughly, perhaps even more than that. Let me feed this first before we go on so fib let's take that high it's not easy because this screen is small so let me fib it from a random spot and then i'm going to move it in place okay so let's now move it in place uh 61.8 exactly there let's see let me also change this so it stands out more we need only from the 61.8 and further there it is so use this art tag the 61.8 pulling back from here um what's 1390 for support but it looks like it might want more right so um i think that you know we we need to respect the potential for more upside uh, this looks like a corrective move lower perhaps an abc 1392 uh good support area uh i would be very careful uh we we might see a resumption higher from there use the turkish lira obviously we already had a leg lower perhaps we're going to see something like this Right, but I would still expect the move higher to resume after a period. So let me be clear: um, I'm not um, uh, ruling out the possibility. It's quite likely that we're going to see uh, some further strengthening of the Turkish lira, pairing back some of the recent losses over time, or a consolidation. Perhaps this uh, ends up being a triangle or something. But in all honesty, um, it's very dangerous thinking that we actually found like, you know, an all time high or whatever else. Right. So um, I think in the short term, looking lower in the USD Turkish Lira makes sense. Um, but, you know, you should be very, very careful because the longer term view hasn't changed. And let's go to the USD Rubble. USD Rubble, I was. I was mentioning specifically before we broke out that this looks to me like a triangle and I, I would expect it to break higher. That actually did happen. Um, we seem to be consolidating again. I would expect that after a period of consolidation, we should at least 
get closer to the target. I, I had said that I'm looking for a, you know, a rather tight area here because we have the 50% fib uh, from the move lower from the all time highs, and we have the quality target from an ABC, a potential ABC at 71.17 and the other level at 70.70. So I would expect that, I don't know what kind of information we're currently building. It might be another triangle. It might be a pennant. I mean, it's too soon to tell, but I would expect that the um, uh, move higher is not done yet. Okay. So I, I would still be quite careful. And one more comment I wanted to make about the USD uh, Chinese Yuan. Uh, the only bearish scenario that I'm seeing here at the moment is the potential. But as I said, this is just a potential, okay, of forming a head and shoulders formation up here. Okay, something like this. So, there is a possibility that we're going to see some kind of a high here, but you know, unless this kind of a scenario takes place, I would still be very, very careful, right? Very, very careful because you know, this move higher has had a lot of momentum, seems to be very strong. Um, and you know, I wouldn't be fighting the trend. Uh, the only way I would be doing that is if we get rejected once again at any point lower than 690. And then we clear 682 to the downside. If that happens, then I would be looking for this kind of price action that I was looking earlier, perhaps move down towards 671, 672 before resuming higher. I'm, I'm guessing that if I, if I actually uh, try to find the target of this head and shoulders just by eyeballing it, I think that the target of this head and shoulders uh, is also somewhere there. So bottom line, only if we break below 682, I would be looking for a move down to 670. Until then, you know, be careful. There might be more upside coming. Anything else that has come up, Stelio, or we call it a day? Uh, I think it's, uh, actually we have Michael asking about the DXY. I mean, we've covered zero dollar and all the, you know, we can, we can, if you, if you have one minute to have yeah. a look at DXY and then we, and then we, uh, Blake covered it, but I will have a minute at it. I will have a look at it, uh, you know, for a minute and then we call it a day. So the DXY, here it is. Whoop. Sorry. Open the chart at the wrong window. Here it is. Let me zoom in. So DXY bullish scenario, as I, as I had said was finding support at previous resistance and then pushing higher once again towards 61.8 right this didn't happen we've already slipped a little bit lower towards 95 95 though is also quite a strong horizontal area of support as you can see here it was resistance it can act as support as long as we're holding this ascending trend line you know there is still the potential for seeing another leg higher but if we actually do slip below this and especially below 94 which is going to constitute for the first time in a long time like a lower low i would be very very careful but i because i think that if we lose 94 and move down towards 90 to 70 is it might happen like you know very fast so you know technically speaking there is still a reason why uh, you would remain bullish and be looking for a move towards the 51.8 uh, from the high that we saw at the very first days of 2017 uh, that's at 97.87, um, uh, but you know, if we slip below that level, perhaps that that can happen tomorrow. You know, with the event that we have, with the event risk that we have, then I, I would be looking for at least one more leg lower towards 92.70, uh, if not much lower, right? Because if if you remember, since the very uh, first days. Uh, first couple of weeks that we started bounding higher in the DXY, I had indicated that, you know, people were initially looking for targets that were like at 92, 93. And I said that, listen, you know, there is a lot of uh, positioning for dollar short. I think that if we start squeezing higher, the index can actually make it higher than people believe. It can make it all the way up to 94.50, uh, which was an area I was looking for. 
it can even make it to you know to 96 96 50. so you know we made it there so going back to my initial comments a long time ago i have to remind you that i'm not a dollar bull i'm a, a dollar bear right so um you know for various reasons that you know are not only technical so uh i wouldn't be surprised if we find out that this is like a you know longer term high that that we're finding here but as always i'm taking it one day at a time and definitely we don't yet have confirmation that this is like you know a mid, medium term at least high so you know because simply because this move higher hasn't been broken yet right we still have a series of high lows so let's take it one day at a time let's see if if we're gonna you know manage to hold that following tomorrow's event risk as i said if we don't i will be looking for 90 to 70 and you know then we we will if that happens we, we start judging on what kind of structure what kind of momentum um what kind of technical formations we get from the market to start determining if there is more upside left and that's just a correction to the corrective move higher or something totally different if it feels impulsive it is, if it feels like actually the recent high is a tradable high in the medium to long term so thank you all very much and see you tomorrow tomorrow we'll have thank quite you. a lot of things in our hands thank you very much Celio. thank you steve thank you have a, a good swim or whatever you're going to do <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.